And you mentioned Dark Side of the Ring. I know there was a bunch of stuff in Dark Side of the Ring you cleared up on Facebook, but maybe for the people that didn't see your Facebook post, you could comment on it here. Yeah, man. You know, there was a couple things they got wrong, you know, like, um, and, you know, you can't blame them. They were doing all these episodes and there was so much information they had on Hawk and I, it could have been a three hour show easily. Uh, but then again, it's not about the accomplishments. It's about the positive and negatives of the career, right? So the part where it said, you know, Animal said that's enough and he went on his own to do his own thing. That wasn't exactly the way it happened. You know, Hawk was the one that was not in the right frame of mind and, uh, you know, just kind of was all pilled out at the time and just walked away from the team. You know, I loved him to death and I, I'm still to this day not mad at him. You know, he was my brother. You know, what you want to do more than anything else is try to help the guy, right? And uh, he just had that that situation going on in the back of his mind and was addicted. And, uh, you know, he took off and made his own deal. You know, I was trying to be a businessman. I wanted to finish out the dates with WWE that I had, that we had, to leave on good terms at least. I mean, how much good terms can you leave? You, you know, one half of the tag team that's at the top of the game there quits. They got a million dollars of TV time into you. You know, it's not easy to leave go on good terms, but I was trying to leave peacefully so we can go back there someday in the future. And, of course, you got the name Legion of Doom from Super Friends, and it wasn't He-Man, like they said, I guess, as well. Yeah, you know, and Paul got that wrong, but, you know, that was easy because Hawk did like He-Man because he always would sit in the car and go, He-Man, you know, and, and, and stuff. And then he called Elring He-Man because now Paul was like a machine. He called him La Machine He-Man, you know. But yeah, we were uh, we were actually watching the uh, getting ready to leave the hotel, the Red Roof Inn in Columbus, Ohio, and, and uh, Super Friends came on TV and heard the guy, the heel on a on a cartoon went. Meanwhile, back at the Legion of Doom, we all looked at each other and we said, "That's great, we got to use that." You know, we figured, what the heck? It's a you know fan friend friendly entertainment back then. Wrestling didn't go to the dark side yet, so we figured, oh well, man, we'll attract the kids by using the Super Friends tag. And they discussed that infamous uh, attempted suicide angle WWE did with Hawk. What was going on in your mind at the time when they were pitching that? Well, when he fell off the Titan Tron? Yeah. You know, when we were sitting in the office, it was uh, Ellering and Hawk and myself and uh, Vince McMahon. And um, when he brought it up to us and said, we're going dark. I forget who else was in the room. I think maybe Bruce Pritchard said, we're going dark. And I said, okay, I'm starting to think to myself, well, how's that going to work? We sell a lot of action figures. We sell a lot of bed sheet and pillowcases for kids, underwear, lunch boxes, video games. How's that going to work going dark for us? We're a kid's gimmick. We're a young person's gimmick. I didn't know how that was going to work. So <clears throat> one thing led to another. And at first they wanted me to do it. And I had a kid in high school, a kid in junior high, and a kid in elementary school. And I said, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that to my kids. I'm not putting my family through that. And I won't do it. And Hawk jumped up and said, I'll do it. And you know, you got to understand the situation, too. Hawk had just come back from the suspension. He wasn't going to make waves. He wanted to be peaceful about it. He goes, I'll do it, and took the pressure off of me, which I appreciate it. But to me, it was a little too close to home because Hawk was already on as, like, third dime being, you know, on a suspension for substance abuse. And I thought that they were kind of trying to rub it into the face a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what, that's why I didn't like it. Do you think they would have eventually brought you and Hawk back if he hadn't passed away? Because of course they ended up bringing you back to team with Holt, Hyde and Wright and be a single star later on. Yeah. I thought, I think they would have brought us back. I mean, you know, we, we have such a unique thing as tag teams as long as we looked halfway like the Road Warriors, we would have been just fine. I mean, look at the state of wrestling today. I mean, yeah. if Hawk were alive today, we could be still the top tag team in any one of the companies because guys just don't know how to be tag teams. No one wants to, no one wants to sell. No one wants to tell a story. No one wants to do anything. Everybody wants to be a superstar, and that's just not the way it works. There's, there's yet to be, and I say this modestly, Devin, there's yet to be a person that comes in the ring whether you're a single or a tag team that gets that infamous road warrior pop, nobody gets it. And there's a reason why they don't get it because they're not taking the time to learn the craft 
to appreciate it and let the fans decide who gets that pop. You can't force the pop. They like you or they don't like you. One of the fans actually wanted me to ask you what your biggest Road Warrior pop was, both in WWE and in Japan. Um, I think anytime we did the Tokyo Dome shots, Road Warrior pop was huge. When we wrestled, uh, Tenru and Hogan was pretty loud. Uh, and then we did Wembley Stadium. That was a loud cheer. I mean, there's 90,000 people standing on the top of their feet uh, going crazy. It, it, was, it was pretty nuts. Those were the two loudest pops, probably. And they left Hawk out of the Brawl for All episode. Uh, what did you think of him entering the Brawl for All at the age he was at that time? You know, um, if they would have called Hawk early in his career, I don't think there's any doubt he probably would have walked right through it because I knew Hawk really well. Uh, at that time, he's already been partying a lot, you know, and everything else. And it, I don't think it was really his age matter. It just was the bra for all was a no win situation for anybody. It didn't help out anybody. Even at the end, it didn't help out Martin Gunn because Butterbean smoked him, you know. So it didn't. When you try to get a guy that's a, not even an amateur boxer fighting a guy that's a pro, come on. How far? How fair is that? Look at our business, Devin. Try to get someone yeah. to, you know, try to walk into a day one. They're not just not going to do what they want. It takes time to learn it and do it and do it and do it. You know, very few guys can make the crossover. You're one of them that did. 